Cool. Draw them lines. <laughs> All right, we're on another episode. Here we go. Because Robert missed um, Friday. Oh, I know. I did. It's, it was my bad. It's all right. I don't hold um, it against you. I'll just make it. Yeah. No. Nobody Whatever. who's listening to this knows that we're doing. Well, they will now, but they don't know what our recording schedule is. I have no um, idea. They have no idea. Um. So, mm-hmm. I was just um. Just listening to uh, the Netflix. Netflix has a Headspace little like yes uh, documentary yes. Thing. Have you yes. Seen that? yes it's really good i was like awesome. oh, this is pretty awesome. cool. yeah they yeah. did a great job made it really simple i was like oh man this is pretty dope um so I, I was i'm excited to see that that's like in the mainstream that that's like a thing on netflix that people are watching you know it's like oh hey man there's we're really i hope, I hope it i hope it does well me too yeah we all need it yes Fuck yes. <laughs> you know, I was watching it going, man, I gotta I need to tune my my practice back up in that regard. Like all my strength and conditioning side of stuff is like super squared away right now. But Dude. but the meditation side is beep. <laughs> we're good at what we practice, my friend. No kidding. <laughs> no. I really don't practice my meditation enough, but I do it daily, but I don't do it enough. Like, I don't give it the attention that I give to the things that I've been great at, right? Well, I shouldn't even say great. I'm not, great for me, right? Right. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Like, I'm good at fucking getting on my bike and taking off or doing intervals on my bike or like going and getting into the gym and doing some strength and conditioning. Yeah, I've done that for most of my life. Yeah. Literally most of my life. Yeah. Um, but you know, even though I've spent a considerable amount of time doing breath work and breath works part of all of that stuff and meditation has been a part of my life for quite some time. It's like, we're talking it's different. 20 it's different. minutes tops, maybe, yeah. you know, it's like, it's uh, different. Mm-hmm. it's different. You know, it's funny. Cause people ask, like, uh, will ask me like, Oh, how do you keep the discipline to keep, you know, doing strength and conditioning stuff. I'm like, because I started like judo when I was seven and I started lifting weights when I was 12. So it's like brushing my teeth. I don't even think about it as an option to not do it. It's not even, started ri- I started riding bikes at three, three. Yeah, dude. You Like it's so, so much a part of who you are. I don't even think about it as like, Oh, I cannot do it. And I've been meditating a long time, but it was a practice. I started as an adult, you know, it's not like, practice that you start when you're a kid where it's just embedded like oh i just do this i don't think about brushing my teeth i just do it i go oh well you know breakfast is over get her done yeah Um, it's just an assumption that i'm gonna go train um and man i've loved being in the i've definitely put myself in the hole training a couple times recently just because i needed it i just needed to be in that that pit a little bit that Mm -hmm. fatigue pit Mm -hmm. there is some lessons there that you just can't learn other places kind of like meditation is like the opposite end of that spectrum like there's some lessons you get from still work that you just can't get other places and there's some things that unless you've been in a deep pit of fatigue there's just things you can't learn about yourself but to be in that that hell hole (laughs) yeah I agree, man. I agree. But I also think it's a very, very, very dangerous, slippery place. And, um, you know, Sam, Sam, um, walk who, you know, who we Mm -hmm. work with now, um, and it's become, you know, he's become a decent friend too. Um, he's opened up his world to me and what he's gone through, dealt with, et cetera, you know, and, um, he was like, "Hey, I think you should listen to." I he, he I list, I told him I listened to this Tim Ferriss podcast. Tim did this great interview with Jim Lauer, and who's a, who's kind of a psych guy. He's a psych. He's a mental health coach. Um, mm-hmm. It was fascinating. 
fascinating interview. Jim is just incredible with what he's done with people. And it's very similar to some of the work that I do with inside the mentorship program, except obviously I work more along the lines of breath work, right? But there's a lot, there's writing and stuff that's attached to it. Anyway, finished it and I was telling Sam and Milos about this. And I was like, you guys should check this out. And they're like, oh, we listen to it. And Sam goes, mate, you need to listen to the, to the um, Michael Phelps, Grant Hackett interview which is the next one. And I was like, uh Oh, I know where this is going. And I listened to it. And I was like, Holy shit. Like such a newfound respect for what these guys are doing and recognizing. Then I decided to go and listen or watch the, the weight of gold documentary. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, there was the last eight years of my life. <laughs> like, like, Woo! And there was an athlete who I told, you know, you and I, and are, are, you uh-huh. may cross path with that I have, that I have worked with who's on there. Um, and I will not name names because, she, you know, whatever um, he yeah. or she doesn't need to be named. But here's this world that we've existed in. And, you know, I've kind of, I've really pivoted what I've been doing on Instagram a lot you know, but it's actually towards this whole idea yeah. of training and I have to do this thing and I have to accomplish this goal that's totally external of me. And, you know, it's like we get into this world and I deal with this daily with what I do with training in order to, why am I doing this at the heart of why is, and this is the importance of that Jim Lair, Lair interview. Because he interviewed, because he, this guy's worked with, like, I think there's something like 17 number ones, the best in the world that he's dealt with, mm-hmm. you know, and, I, and I've had my opportunities with probably a handful or more of the number ones in the world um, where I've gotten to work with them. And at the heart of that, when he asked these questions of why are you doing this, never once was it ever about winning something, yet that's what all of the goal was about like that's what all the training was about and so we lose ourselves in this process of like what we're doing right and I, I'm sorry that I like you know no, took what you did no, you know, but good taking somebody such as yourself who's been embedded in this world and dealt with these very same things but yet is so in tune with himself and is able to be in relationships and still not lose himself but yet battles that right? Like we, you and I have dealt with this, right? Like we've talked about this deeply, but you're like, you're somebody who I regard very highly, which is also why we work together. Sure. Like, well, of course. Cause, well, I mean, you're like, I want to be involved and I'm like, hmm, let's, let's see, see how well, let, let, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Show up. And it was, you showed up and it was yeah. like, show me who you are. <laughs> yeah. You showed me who you were. And I was like, I like that person. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a part of my life now. So like, and you're, you're so passionate about everything, but it's like, you also deal with things in your personal life that you're very outward to me about. Right. Yeah. And because you are able to share with me what's going on there and you deal with those things and you take responsibility for those things. I'm like, yeah, I need to keep you even closer. (laughs) Like you're somebody who I really want here. And it's like, people don't realize that we're internalizing so much because we're not dealing with this thing that like we use for training, right? Like I've I've had a platform for training for fucking 15 years where people have come on it's had highs, it's had lows, it's had mediums. Like there's been lots of people. There's been very few people. There's been lots of people like, and it's so interesting how many of us are glued to a number and a statistic and it doesn't even matter. Well, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta have context. Right. And just to kind of, I'll, I'll bring it back around to this, but yeah, in, in contrast, cause I went in, out <laughs> in contrast to, you know, cause I, you know, when you pinged me with the weight of gold, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but I went and watched like some clips and stuff from it. 
and it really talks about essentially the concept that on the other side of the peak is a valley mm -hmm. right and that mm -hmm. how these major performers have you know they put so much of their their value structure and their identity into the accomplishment that once it's over they don't know who the hell they are and they're usually quite young they're not even halfway through life yet and they have no clue who they are or what they stand for or or what they value Dude. and and to contrast that i listened to um jordan burroughs you know who jordan burroughs is uh olympic, olympic wrestler like yes. Yes. probably one of the best yes freestyle yeah. wrestlers ever he was on with rogan recently and he has this incredibly grounded presence and um, this really interesting perspective on what he's doing, why he's doing it. And you can, you listen to him talking, you're like, man, this kid's going to have a future. Like he's going to have a real, and it was really cool because he, you know, he showed up to, to this, the, the largest, essentially the largest media audience in the world, right? Rogan has the most ears of anybody. And what most do when they go there is, they think about it in terms of promotion, right? If they don't, if it's not somebody who Joe already knows, I'm going to promote myself. Yeah. What this young man did was he saw somebody who he felt like has dealt with it right, who has dealt with success in a way that he respects. And so he was having this conversation with Joe about how do you transition? How do you manage the attention you get? How you know, I'm trying to, here's what I'm trying to figure out, Joe, what do you think about this? And this, the way he was having this conversation was just far different because of course he was talking about himself, but it wasn't like me, 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 I, I, I look what I did. Me, me, me. It was mm. a much more mature, thoughtful conversation. And I was like, wow, this guy, whatever he does after wrestling, he's going to be successful. Yeah. Because it's just his whole, his whole frame of thinking was so much bigger than, and I mean, his Instagram handle, ironically, is all I see is gold, <laughs> but he came from a huge failure point early in his career and then built himself out of it. And a really interesting guy. I would definitely encourage anybody to, to listen to it, but um, really really interesting stuff and i think to kind of bring it back to the whole training thing i think some of it is because and this is something i was talking to the to the guys about earlier today and really describes the direction that we're going in is that we misappropriate the word training a lot mm -hmm. right yeah. training training is preparing for a known outcome bro i just had an epiphany i need I to write that down because it pertains to what we've been talking about I, like Oh, I go know. ahead. This okay. is where we're headed, right? Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but a practice is and there forever. It is. And there right? it is. And this yeah. is something we've been talking about. Like, if you listen to the podcast back, so this is today's 10, the nine previous, because, you know, I go in and re listen and list things in the show notes so that essentially people know what's coming. I think we've had at least part of the conversation has been devoted to the idea of practice every time. And that's yeah. because. If you have a known outcome, you're training. Like a police officer trains for what they know will be a part of that job, right? But a practice is holistic. It's, it's everything. And that goes back to like, what's the old saying that, you know, we've thrown around forever is everything is everything. Yeah. Right. That's a practice. Like yes. that's not, that's not training. We don't, we don't train, you know, uh, no. we might, a part of something might be training. Right. Because we're looking for a known adaptation. But if you're, you know, I was thinking about this in terms of athletes, and I like that people are training in a more sort of athletic way. Um, and I think, you know, CrossFit brought a lot of that back, like that the average person should have access to strength and conditioning tools that are really effective. But athlete, the word athlete comes from athletos, which means to compete. Right. So if you're not competing, what are you doing? Right? Then you're not, then you're not training. It's okay. Right. So just to know, and then it, it to me, it's like, 
every time I remind myself of that, it takes weight off my shoulders. Yeah. Go, oh, well, it doesn't matter what I, it doesn't matter what happens to, oh man, I didn't feel as good in the gym today. All right. That's fine. Cause I'm not, what am I, what am I doing here? Right. So anyway, yeah, there's definitely more conversations that are coming down the road, both offline and online. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, you know, I shouldn't. Well, you may have just gotten a real good idea of what's about to fucking what, what what's about to change inside what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, we're about to we're about to break this thing down. It's like it's like we said maybe like two or three years ago we were talking. Mm-hmm. We were like, by the time everybody starts doing breath work, we'll be onto something else. That's right. You know, and it's like yeah. it's not. But it, it's not it's that not, we're not going to be. No, breath in work is doing important. breath work. Breath work's important. It's very Just, important. We're, right? we're moving. Yeah. And it's, you know, I can't remember, maybe it was on a podcast or something recently. I was talking to somebody about breath work and like, oh, how do you guys get into it? What made you guys want to want to make this the center of your of your services, your offerings, philosophy, whatever. And I was like, because it's democratizable, like the buy, the the entry point is low. As soon as you go to strength and conditioning, there's a higher entry point for the average person. But if you have breath work anybody it doesn't matter if you've never exercised before and you never plan on exercising like you can sit in your lazy boy and do it that's why like it's so democratic that's why it's so powerful and it scales and you know um it has such a potent effect on essentially everything simultaneously (laughs) yeah it's interesting i am We've, you know, we've stuck to this theme, rightfully so, of like teaching principles and fundamentals. And I've really thought about, like, there was some deep thinking actually last night with a friend of mine about stuff like this. And, you know, the mind is nothing but theories. That's it. And we have come up with ideas to attempt to recreate or better which what naturally occurs outside right like we're of the mindset that we could create a better training plan for a lion like that's how we behave we think we could create a better training plan for a lion to be a better lion that that's an impossibility you know that's so funny because this goes back to like so many conversations i'm having with tommy lately because she's interacting with animals in this really intimate way and she was talking to me about like why do dogs require a training program she was like it's because we shove them into an artificial environment exactly so as soon as they're in an artificial environment, now you need it. Now they need it because they're they're you force them to live with you. But she's like, wild dogs don't need a fucking training plan. They just go be dogs, and then whatever there's, shit, con- there's consequences for yeah. everything. And whatever shit happens to them is the shit that happens to them, and you can put whatever value you want on it. But as soon as you ask a dog to be quiet in your living room, you're asking them to do something that isn't that isn't it doesn't come with the hardware. No. You have to install that software later. It's a plugin that you add on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't come with the system. And so it's interesting though. She tells me, she goes and talks to people and it's like this, this aha moment for them when she helps them understand this about their pet, like teaching their dog, something as simple as like sitting. And she was like, well, did you ever at- attach a meaning to that word? Or are you just saying the word? Because they don't know what that word is. It's just a face noise. And so whatever you do to them when you say the word is what they think that word means. But they don't come built knowing sit. And it's just like us. There's all this, it's environmental cues that we get where we start to attach meaning. And that's why breath is so powerful because it doesn't give a shit about any of that. It's way deep. It's too deep. 
too deep. It's too deep. It just is like you, you bypass all the nonsense. Yeah. It's a great quote by some doc that uh, the foundation put up the other day. A, a gal, I forget her name, and it's terrible of me not to have her name. Um, maybe you can look it up real quick. Yeah, I'm doing it. But she's like, you can't think your way out of, you can't think your way into parasympathetic state. Yes. That's that's where breathing comes in. Uh, right. Kate, Kate Pate, PhD. Yeah, Dr. Kate Pate. Yeah, you can't talk yourself into a parasympathetic state, but you can breathe yourself there. Yeah. It's fantastic, man. It's this is the tool. But 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 here, here's the thing is that you can't like just because you can bring yourself down, you can bring your nervous system down to chill out. The thinker, the theory, I the theory, the imagination is what gets away from us. And so it, you know, this is the importance of having this practice. This thing that we're talking about is like, what are these obstacles that you're creating for yourself? You know, I had a one of the people who I work with, who I mentor, um, she literally, I was like, hands went up this morning. I'm like, I think we're done. I think you don't need to work with me anymore. You just figured it out. And it was like, she, she's, she was laying in bed at 7.30 this morning. And she's like, usually I'm ready to get up at 7.30, but I felt like I needed to sleep more. And then I was like, but I went to bed at 10.30. So I should just get up because it's like I've been in bed too long. And I was, and then she goes, literally, the next breath she goes, but then I realized maybe I need to just pay attention to what my body's telling me. And I was like, there it is. Yeah. That's everything right there. Why aren't you listen? Why are you trying to think you're better than what your body is communicating to you? Because we think we can train a lion better than a lion fucking can be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the other, th you know, I, in the addendum to that, I think is like accepting the consequences in either direction. Of course. <laughs> like, so you sleep in, that might mean you give up some of the other stuff that yes. you might normally do and that and that that's okay that is yes right you, you've got can you be okay with those consequences yeah you made a choice and i made this choice and that's totally fine yes. and i didn't get to do i had to cut 20 minutes off my yoga practice but it's like well how much how much value is in that 20 minute yoga practice if you're sleep deprived because <laughs> you're just fighting that anyway so you know yeah. that's something I, that's actually a like a good personal example because that's something i had to come to grips with that like this winter is like i just was needing a lot more sleep than i was accustomed to you know normally i'm like up at 4 30 you know for the most of my life i'm like 4 35 o'clock i'm up boom let's, let's get it done and this fall this winter it's been like six o'clock a couple days seven which is mm -hmm. unheard of but it's like and i was like well you know, classic sort of strength and conditioning thinking, oh, of my training, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, maybe it's the amount of decisions you're making per day, like the psychological effort that you're putting in. That's why you actually need more sleep. Maybe it has nothing to do with your physical training at all. Turns, turns out, turns that's out, energy. Turns that's out, energy. Yeah, turns out your brain uses a lot of energy. So, I mean, there's a reason why chess players burn 6,000 calories a day. In a mat, in in playing in tournaments. See that? So, if you want to lose weight, eat less and play chess. Oh, yeah. how good if, would that be? If, eat less, play chess. Eat less, play chess. <laughs> Man, why can't our stuff be that simple? Nah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um. All right. We're, we're good we're there we're at we're, okay. at we're at our time everybody thanks for listening we appreciate you see you next time our dribble <laughs>